How many goblins could a goblin gob if a goblin could gob goblins? Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, one word, all caps, will get you 10% off orders of $10 or more at Flipside Gaming, Original Magic Art, and orders of singles at Multizone. If they don't have what you're looking for, you could check out TCG Player and use my affiliate link to help support the channel. Looking for a way to bling out your deck and not spend a fortune? Alter Sleeves can help with that, and you can help with the channel at the same time by using my affiliate link. Or, if you're looking to join the Goblin Gang, you can always support me through Patreon. Hey gang and welcome back! Today's game is another one filmed with those delightful Danes. We have Sander playing his Malkman Breaches deck. His opener has a Thought Vessel, Everflowing Chalice, Brainstorm, Thrill of Possibilities, Nettle Drone, and Two Islands. Adam is playing a Rumi from the newly printed Commander Legends, keeping Diluvian Primordial, Force of Will, Corpse Churn, An Island, Mystic Remora, Fabled Passage, and Fleshbag Marauder. Jesper is playing Rashmi, keeping Two Islands, Swan Song, Rapid Hybridization, Mystic Remora, Beast Within, and a Hinterland Harbor. I am playing my Misform Ultimus deck, and forget to record my hand. Sander wins the die roll, and starts us off. Sander plays an island for his first turn, and passes. Adam plays a Fabled Passage, cracking it to go and find a swamp which comes into play tapped. Jesper plays an island, and casts Mystic Remora. Responding to this, Sander casts a Brainstorm, draws three, and puts two back. I play a Seed of the Synod, and pass. Sander plays a Mountain, while we admire Might Alter Mistform. He then plays a Thought Vessel, letting Jesper draw from the Remora trigger. Adam plays an Island, and casts his own Mystic Remora. This lets Jesper draw from his Mystic Remora, seeing the Mystic Remora. Jesper pays his cumulative upkeep cost, and then plays a Hinterland Harbor, passing. I draw, and play a Griffin Canyon. Sander plays another Island, and then casts Breaches. Adam pays his 1 to the Mystic Remora, passing. Jesper pays his 2 to the Mystic Remora, and plays an Island, passing back to me. I play a Riptide Laboratory for turn, and pay 3 for a Trinket Mage. The Mage enters, and I get to go and find a 1-drop or less artifact, and I announce I'll find a Soul Ring, passing. Sander untaps for turn, and plays a Cascade Bluffs. He then brings out Malcolm, which has Adam responding. Adam casts Force of Will for free by exiling a card from his hand and losing one life. Jesper also gets a draw from this, and the commander is then countered. Moving to combat, Sander then hits Adam with Breaches. This has Adam exiling his top card, and we see a Mox Diamond, which Sander is tempted to cast, but just leaves an exile to deny Adam and Jesper the draw. Adam pays 2 to the cumulative upkeep, and draws, playing a Swamp. He then passes to Jesper. And at the end of turn, Jesper uses Rapid Hybridization on Bridges. The commander is destroyed, while Adam gets to draw a card from his Mystic Remora. Jesper doesn't keep his fish around, and he plays a Forest Return. He casts a Birds of Paradise, and then drops a Wave Break Hippocamp, passing. I play an Island for turn, and cast Soul Ring. Adam draws from this, and I then cast a Rhystic Study, letting Adam draw another card. As I move to combat, Sander casts Thrill of Possibilities, paying the one against my study, which Jesper objects to as it's helping Adam. I then swing my Trinket Mage at Jesper for two. Sander plays a Training Ground as his land for turn, and taps enough to recast Malcolm, paying for the study tax. Moving to combat, the beast goes at Jesper for revenge. He takes the three, and Sander then passes. Adam lets his fish go as well, drawing for turn. He casts a Mana Crypt, and lets me draw one. He then casts a Demir Signet, paying the one, and then a Flashbag Marauder, not paying the extra for the Rhystic Study Tax. I draw, and we then all have to sacrifice a creature as the Marauder comes in, and Adam passes. Jesper plays an island, and taps enough for Rashmi. I draw from the study, and he then passes, and at the end of turn, 
things come full cycle as I use rapid hybridization to take out Rashmi. However, Jesper has other plans, paying one blue to cast Swan Song. He lets me draw from it, and the spell is countered. I untap, and draw. I play an island for turn, and tap 6 mana for Unesh. The Sphinx enters, and I get a mini Factor Fiction. Adam makes the piles with shackles and an island, and I decide to take the pile with a Mirror Regiri. Moving to combat, I then hit Jesper for 2 with my new bird. Sander plays a mountain for turn, and taps enough to cast a kicked overflowing chalice. He doesn't pay the 1, and I draw. I realize I need to discard at this point, while Sander swings Malcolm at Adam for 2. He gets a treasure once his commander connects. In his second main phase, Nettle Drone then hits the field, but he does pay the 1 for the study trigger. Adam rolls for his mana crypt, and doesn't take any damage. He then casts a Liliana, Dreadhorde General, letting me draw from casting her. He down ticks her once she enters, forcing everyone to sacrifice two creatures. Jesper pays one for a Mystical Tutor, and responding to my study trigger, I cast my own Swan Song to counter it. This has Jesper getting a Rashmi trigger as well, and he reveals his top card, a Lanoir Elves, and puts it to hand. He then gets a bird token from the counter, and he's able to sacrifice the birds and swan to keep Rashmi around, and with nothing else, Adam passes. Jesper draws for turn, and casts the Lanowar Elves we just saw, letting me draw a card. He reveals his top card to the Rashmi trigger, Peregrine Drake, and puts it to hand. Rashmi then takes out Liliana during combat, and he passes to me. I play a tap Path of Ancestry, and then pay enough for a Mare Regiri. I follow up with an Amoeboid Changeling, which is a merfolk, so I get to untap something thanks to the Regiri trigger. It's Soul Ring, and I then cast Master of Waves. I untap another permanent, and as it enters, I get four Horse Elemental tokens, and I pass to Sander. Sander plays a Fiery Islet as his land for turn, and casts a Goblin Electromancer, paying the one. He then casts Soul Ring, paying the one again, before finally playing out Anger, and paying one for that as well. He then passes, keeping Anger back as a blocker. Adam rolls for his Crypt, taking three as he fails. He casts Lightning Greaves, and then responds to the Study Trigger, flashing out Hullbreacher. Jesper also responds to the Hullbreacher on the stack, casting Factor Fiction, and letting me draw one. We then resolve the Factor Fiction, with Adam making the piles again. Adam makes a pile with a Deadeye Navigator and Wild Growth, and the rest in another pile. Jesper obviously takes the Deadeye pile. The Hull Breacher then resolves, and I decide with the Study Trigger, knowing fully well it's replaced by Adam's Hull Breacher trigger at this point, to give him a treasure. I'm doing this to help Adam have mana for answers, because Jesper's inevitable infinite mana combo is probably coming next turn. Adam then moves the Greaves over onto the Hull Breacher, and it gains Shroud. Sander asks for clarification on what the Hull Breacher denies, and as we realize it's any extra draws, he asks if it's okay to sacrifice his Fiery Islet in response to it, wheeling back a bit. We all agree it's fine, and he does so and Adam then passes. Jesper plays an island, and casts Wild Growth on a forest. He gets a Rashmi trigger, revealing Submerge, and putting to hand. He doesn't pay for the study, and Adam gets a treasure since I say I'll draw. We then see the earlier revealed Peregrine Drake, and I give Adam another treasure. Adam responds while the Drake is on the stack, casting Frantic Search. He draws two, discards two, and untaps three lands. I also give him another treasure from the study in Hullbreacher, we then see Thought Scour, with me giving Adam another treasure, and he then mills himself for two and draws a card. Sadly, the Drake then resolves, and Jesper taps one more land as it enters to float a mana. He then untaps five lands, and using the floating mana, plus more lands to drop a Deadeye Navigator. It enters, and he soul bonds it to the Drake. Jesper is at this point able to make infinite mana, and he untaps all of his lands. He pays one for Miri's Guile, and then plays out a Runic Armosaur. He passes, and at the end of turn, Adam casts a Corpse Churn, and I give him another treasure thanks to my study trigger. He mills some cards, and then returns to hand Opposition Agent to hand. Adam then flashes out Opposition Agent, and we move to my turn. I untap, and draw. I play Darksteel Citadel, and count up my mana. 
I pay 3 mana to cast Curse of the Swine where X is 1, targeting the Deadeye Navigator with it. Jesper decides to use Submerge, targeting his Deadeye Navigator to save it by putting it on top of his library. He first gets a Rashmi trigger, and it's the Sensei's Divining Top. The top then resolves, and the Deadeye goes on top of his library. With all that resolved, I then pay 5 mana, casting a Mystic Confluence, and picking the mode to bounce a creature 3 times. I target Rashmi, the Armasaur, and the Drake. Responding to this, Jesper uses Delay. This has me exiling my Confluence with 3 counters onto it. Jesper then uses his top, and I announce I'll move to combat, and I swing my Horse Elemental tokens at Jesper. He moves to blocks, and puts Rashmi, the Armasaur, and the Drake in front of one of each. Before moving to damage, I activate my Amiiboid Changeling, tapping it to have one of my horses become all creature types, and then tap my Griffin Canyon to pump it by plus one plus one and untap it. Jesper gets a draw trigger from the Armasaur because of this, but it's denied by the Hull Breacher. After trying to find a way out of this, Jesper sadly realizes he can't bargain or destroy enough to save his Drake, and it goes to the graveyard, and Jesper takes four. With combat over, I pass to Sander. Sander draws her turn and taps enough to recast Breaches. I choose not to draw from the study, and he then plays out a Glinthorn Buccaneer. It has haste, so he swings it at Adam. Adam doesn't block, and once the Glinthorn connects, Adam is forced to exile his top card from Breaches seeing the pirate connect. It's a Treasure Keeper, which Sander casts. He then passes to Adam. Adam draws and rolls for his Mana Crypt trigger, taking three as he fails it. He plays a Sunken Hollow for turn, and asks for creatures in our graveyards. There aren't a ton of good choices beyond Jesper's Gilded Drake, and we then see a Phyrexian Metamorph, with Adam losing 2 life to the Phyrexian Mana, and he has it come in as a copy of the Runic Armasaur. Adam then plays out a Puppeteer Clique, and brings back the Peregrine Drake. Adam then casts a Vindictive Lich. Adam then passes, exiling the Peregrine Drake as end step. Jesper uses Beast Within at the end of turn, blowing up the Metamorph copy of the Runic Armasaur. He resolves his Rashmi trigger as well, revealing Misty Rainforest and putting it to hand. He then untaps for turn. Jesper recasts his Deadeye in his main phase, and soul bonds it with Rashmi. He also resolves his Rashmi trigger, revealing a forest and putting it to hand, and he plays it for turn and passes. I remove a Suspend counter from my Mystic Confluence and draw. I cast Mind Over Matter in my main phase, and the table isn't thrilled. I remind them it's purely defensive at this point, and I then discard two cards to untap two islands, and pass. Sander draws, and recasts Malcolm in his main phase. The Hull Breacher is doing a great job right now of keeping Sander and Jesper from comboing off, and he declares he'll move to combat. I discard my Sword of Light and Shadow to the Mind Over Matter, tapping the Glinthorn just in case, and Sander then passes turn. Adam rolls for his Mana Crypt, and passes. He goes to combat as well, swinging the Lich at me. I just take the hit. He then brings in Arumi in his second main phase, and drops a Hedron Crab, which Jesper protests to, saying he shouldn't be allowed to die to a card he created. Adam then sacrifices three creatures to flashback Dread Return, and he has to pick a target for the Lich. He has Sander sacrifice a creature, Jesper lose five, and I have to discard two cards. With the modes chosen, Sander counters the Dread Return with Swan Song. I also respond to the trigger, exiling enough cards from my graveyard to cast Dig Through Time. It's not a draw, but rather put to hand, so it gets around Hull Breacher. I then discard my two cards, while the Puppeteer Clique returns from its own Persist trigger. This lets him bring back the Gilded Drake from Jesper's yard, and he swaps control of it with the Rumic Armasaur. Adam then announces he'll equip Arumi with the Greaves, and I respond to this as well tapping her by discarding a card to Mind Over Matter. Adam then moves the Grease back over onto Hull Breacher, and after that, he passes. At the end of turn, Jesper has to exile the Gilded Drake. He also uses his top to look at his top three, and we move to his turn. Jesper plays a Misty Rainforest, and passes. I untap, and draw. Remembering to down to Confluence's Delay Trigger, and I then pass to Sander. Sander draws for turn, and goes to combat. Malcolm goes at Jesper, while the Glinthorn goes at me. Because he's attacking, Sander can activate the Glinthorn's ability. He does so, and Adam gets to draw from the Runic Armasaur. And then Sander discards a card, but the draw half of the ability is replaced by Adam gaining a treasure thanks to Hullbreacher. 
The Glinthorn then deals one to each of Sander's opponents, and we each exile our top cards because of Britches. And he gains three treasure tokens because of Malcolm. Sander then does it again, with Adam gaining a card draw and a treasure token as well. He then goes for Broke, discarding his last card in hand, and doing it for a third time. With all that done, we then move to damage, with Jesper taking two from Malcolm, while I block the Glinthorn with Master of Waves, who has protection from red, and an Elemento token to take it out. Jesper has to exile his top card, and with the trigger on the stack, uses his top to hide anything good from Sander. The card exiled to Boreal Druid, and in his second main phase, Sander then starts casting some of those exiled cards, playing out a Chupacabra, who enters and takes out a Rumi. He then casts my Gale Rider Sliver and a Boreal Druid and passes to Adam. Adam rolls for his Crypt and passes. He recasts a Rumi and asks how many cards I have in hand. I have one, and Adam moves to equip a Rumi with the Greaves, but once more, I tap her down in response thanks to Mind Over Matter by discarding a card. He then moves the Greaves back over onto Hullbreacher and passes. At the end of turn, Jesper uses his top to rearrange his top three. Jesper draws and plays a Winding Canyon as his land drop. He casts Momir Vig and looks at his top card for Rashmi. It's Eternal Witness, which he's able to cast since it has a lower converted mana cost than Momir, and it enters, returning Factor Fiction to his hand. He then passes to me. I remove my final counter from my Mystic Confluence, and it comes back to the stack, which allows me to target three creatures to bounce to hand. I target Arumi, Rashmi, and the Gale Rider Sliver. With the targets now declared, Jesper casts his Factor Fiction again. He gets a Rashmi trigger, and responding to his own trigger, he activates his top to rearrange his top three. He puts them back and reveals his top card, putting on a Talisman. He then has me pick the piles, and I put one counter in each pile, and the chrome locks with the pact. He takes this pile, and the bounce then resolves. I then draw for turn, and cast Mist for him using my path and scry one. I get to untap a permanent because of the Regery, and I pass to Sander. Sander's turn has him moving to combat, and swinging Malcolm at Jesper. Before damage, Jesper uses his top to hide any good cards on top, and he exiles a land, which Sander then plays, and he passes to Adam. Adam rolls for his mana crypt and avoids damage. He recasts Arumi and moves to equip the Greaves onto her. This time, I allow it. He then taps enough, exiling enough cards to let him cast the Phyrexian Metamorph with Encore. He gets three copies of it, with one coming as a Hulk Reacher, one as an Internal Witness, and one is a treasure keeper. He returns to hand his windfall from his graveyard with the witness trigger. He then casts it, and with lightning fast reflexes, in response, I overload a cyclonic rift. This has Sander sacrificing all of his treasures to float some mana, and the rift then resolves, and all of my opponents bounce their permanents back to hand. We then all discard our hands, and since they're so big at this point, we all end up drawing 14 cards. Adam then casts a cloud of fairies and a soul ring. He announces he'll change phases, but Sander just sacrifices a myriad landscape that he'd played from my exiled cards to find two lands. Adam then plays Felwar Stone, and I ask if he pays the one. He doesn't, which lets me draw, and I realize I missed two triggers from the study, putting out the Die of Shame. He then plays out a Dire Fleet Hoarder, and I get another draw. At the end of turn, Jesper cracks his Misty Rainforest, losing one to find a land while Adam discards down to seven. Jesper plays an Oracle of Moldaya, letting me draw a card. He then plays it an island, and drops Seaborn Muse. I draw from that as well, and he then casts a Merchant Scroll, letting me draw from it as well, and goes to find an instant or a sorcery. He reveals a Nexus of Fate, and puts it to hand. Jesper untaps with me, and at the end of my upkeep, casts Nexus of Fate to give himself another turn. It resolves, and he shuffles it into his library, and I then draw for turn. I play Nykthos as my land for turn, and then move to cast a Diviner's Wand. Sander rightly counters the artifact with Negate. I then activate Nykthos for 9, and then discard an island to Mind Over Matter, untapping Nykthos and reactivating it. I do this again, ending up with a total of 21 blue mana. 4 of it gets me Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, and I uptick him, targeting myself, 
milling myself for two and drawing one. I then cast Elixir of Immortality. I then play out a Seafloor Oracle and cast a Glass Pool Mimic, which comes in as a copy of the Oracle as well. I then play the newly printed and, might I add, highly anticipated new card to the deck, Commander's Plate. It resolves, and I equip it onto Mistform, giving it protection from red, white, black, and green, not to mention plus three plus three. I then bring out a Loxodon Warhammer and gear up Mistform again. Moving to combat, I swing Mistform at Jesper and my Merfolks at Sander. Before moving to blocks, Sander casts a Desperate Ravings. He doesn't pay the one, and I draw a card from the study. It then resolves, and Jesper also gets in on the action, casting Venser, and doesn't pay the one. As the wizard enters, he bounces Misform back to my hand. We then move to combat damage, with Sander taking eight, and I get to draw six cards from my Seafloor Oracles, seeing Merfolk hit. In my second main phase, I do the whole Nykthos thing again, gaining tons of blue mana, and cast a Factor Fiction. I have Sander makes the piles, and I just take the pile with a zombie. I cast her, and with Jace already out, I use the combo between Azami and Mind Over Matter to draw my library out and win with Jace's replacement effect. Game, rev <clears throat> Game review time. So this was actually probably one of the longer ones that I've ever filmed again, hitting just over two hours. It was a ton of fun, and I love seeing everyone's deck being able to do stuff. Jesper had his Rashmi deck almost go infinite. Sander was also almost able to go infinite with the Glinthorn Buccaneer and his commanders out. Adam had that sweet combo of Hull Breacher and Opposition Agent out, basically not allowing anyone to draw any extra cards or tutor for anything, and I got to win with Mistform. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.